thank you so much for joining us. Really excited to see you, even if it is on, you know, Zoom or on the computer. But I just wanted to start with what your experiences were like as a young black player playing hockey. Well, I mean, you know, going back to my my youth, my youth days, um, I have to be honest, it was it was great. I I really didn't experience anything anything derogatory or negative other than once in a while teammates joking around and telling off color jokes and stuff like that but for the most part um if it got to a point where i i um i stood up for myself and asked them to stop they always did so it wasn't it wasn't it was more boys being boys and i know people don't like to hear that that phrase these days but that's really what it was just young kids trying to you know determine who they were and what they what they were going they're going to stand for and i remember my my first um year in the american hockey league we i i, I got to play with, with my childhood hero his name is ray newfeld he was a black hockey player as well in fact when he played there were only three guys in the league it was um newfeld mckegney and grant fuhrer and i got to play with ray my rookie year and i and i i idolized this guy i mean he must have been creeped out when he, i used to stare at him all the time i used to watch how he tied his skates how he taped his stick and i wanted to be just like him and there i was 23 years old and i was trying to emulate this guy who was seven years my senior but um we were in the uh penalty box one one game in sherbrooke quebec it's where montreal had their american league team and uh during a break and play they, they um the organist started playing like bongo african music with monkey sounds and stuff like that and um and you know obviously they were taunting us and i looked at ray and i said what the hell is all that and ray ray was so cool he just looked at me and said hey kid welcome to pro hockey don't let it get to you and i remember just thinking and you know, i was really mad about it but you know, at, the, at the same time, there's really nothing I could do about it. They were trying to get me off my game, and they were, they were about to do anything they could do to, to make that happen. And what what sort of eased the um eased the situation for me was we had a guy on our team named Steve Tajura. He was a Japanese Canadian, and when he was on the ice during breaks and play, they they play Asian music with chimes and all that stuff, trying to get him off his game. How have you seen the league evolve and, and how much fun has that been for you to maybe turn on the TV and and see some different faces than maybe the normal, um, you know, fan would see playing hockey? It's a predominantly white sport at this point. Yeah, I think I think what you're seeing today is, um, again, if people can read this any way they want. But I, I'll tell you, I think today what you're seeing today is a, is a result of um, of African-Canadians and African-Americans doing better in society. Um when it comes to economic um, improvement, stuff like that, jobs and things of that nature, hockey is a very, very expensive sport. I mean, it could cost you ten to twenty thousand dollars a year to have one child in the game. The fact you're seeing more and more um, African Canadians and African Americans playing tells you that people are doing better financially. And so, what you're seeing is a, res a direct result of that. So, um, these kids would not be playing hockey if they if their parents couldn't afford it. You know what I mean? So. I'm I'm thrilled to see that. I love the fact that you know Jerome McGinley is getting in the actually in the Hockey Hall of Fame. I love the fact that Mr. Ree is being honored the way he is, um, with his number being retired in Boston, and of course again being inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. So, um, I, I I it brings a tear to my eye to see what's going on right now. I love it. Um, the more and more kids of color are, are are becoming dominant players in the league, and I saw all the players on both teams rally around those guys. It made me feel good. I mean, and, and again, I, 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 you know, I was getting choked up when I was watching that. I thought, wow, this game has come a long way because, um, you know, I don't think that would have been something we would have done in my era. I don't, not that my teammates wouldn't have supported me, but you were always afraid to to, to rock the boat, so to speak. And um, the fact that these players today are are taking a stand for social justice is something I'm very proud of uh, proud of them for because um, they're using their status and their popularity and fame to do great things in society. And it's funny because a lot of people criticize them, not a lot, but there are people who criticize them for that and tell them they should just shut up and play play hockey. And you know, I, I say it's the opposite. I mean, you're only going to be this influential for a very short period of time in your life. And you know, what are you, what's your legacy gonna be? You know, you know it's, it's, it's gotta be more than just scoring a few hundred goals and you know, a bunch of assists, you know, it's gotta be way more than that. And they have a chance to really impact the world. It has nothing to do with their, their ability to do their jobs. They all they're all performing admirably on the ice, but they can they can take it a step further by by trying to affect um, social change. And these guys are doing a great job with it.
I know you've coached players at all different levels and you mentioned that you coach kids now too. How important is it to diversify this game? And, and you, you touched on it, the more um, different faces you see at, at the highest level, that's an inspiration to the young kids to say, hey, I could do that too. I can play this sport and be successful too. I went to one Maple Leaf game as a kid and um, Mike Marsden was playing for the Washington Capitals and, and watching him play um, really inspired me. And, and I started thinking as a kid, well, if black people can't play hockey, then why is that guy on the ice playing for the Washington Capitals? So, so that inspired me and it taught me that not to listen to naysayers and it taught me to just believe in myself. And if I felt that I can do something, then I, I was willing to work hard enough for it. I could, I could accomplish it. And I think hockey was something that really taught me that, that um, it's not the color of my skin, but it's the content of my character as uh, Dr. Dr. King says. And, um, and that really kind of came out in hockey. I, I worked hard at the game. I believed in myself. I never quit. And as a result, I got to play in the National Hockey League. And so once, once, I, once I was able to do that, I realized that I could do anything I set my mind to. And even to this day in business, I, I feel the same way. And, and I really want to pass that on to not just black kids, but all kids.